Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, December 27th, 2019, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Cook Political Report, uh, I guess, analysis for the 2020 House elections and why the Democrats are pretty much the favorites to remain in the majority. Now, I remember seeing a lot of comments directly after the impeachment, which wasn't too long ago, just seems like a long time ago uh, for whatever reason, uh, talking about how the Democrats have pretty much just given up the race for the house uh i guess election or elections since there's 435 of them in terms of voting delegates um but you know taking a look at the house of representatives the democrats are not going to lose the majority at least as of right now it doesn't seem like there's a clear path for the republican party to take back said majority now yes they may lose a couple of seats they may not gain on what their uh majority was right after 2018, but there is no way that the Democrats are going to lose the majority unless something drastic happens, and not much uh, more can happen besides an impeachment that could impact these Democrats. The impeachment wasn't the best route for them to go, but they were focused on maintaining uh, all of their uh, representatives to be reelected. They know that a lot of the Democrats that may have voted for Trump's impeachment may stir up some Republican voters that didn't necessarily vote in 2018 being angry at the president. Uh, yes, a lot of these Republicans did not support or were not happy with the president back in 2018, but not all of them approved of this impeachment. A lot of these districts were not approving of Donald Trump being impeached, and that's never a good sign for Democrats that are winning in Trump districts. There's a number of districts uh, that Donald Trump won in 2016 uh, in terms of the presidential election, uh, and then the Democrats won in 2018. Most of these were flips, though some Democrats were incumbents, um, but uh, it really uh, isn't too uh, impactful for the 2020 election. But we do need to take a look at um, whether or not these are rated as Democratic seats still. This was updated December 2019, so uh, pretty much... Uh, around impeachment time i'm pretty sure they haven't calculated all of it um but uh let's see so there's 31 trump districts uh that pretty much um like i said before donald trump won in back in 2016 the democrats then won in 2018 or held on to in 2018 uh, a lot of these people uh, were outspoken about uh, President Trump being impeached. Uh, one person to mention, uh, Jeff Van Drew, he was a Democrat elected in 2016, um, uh, sorry, 2018, and has since uh, decided to flip over to the uh, Republican Party just based off this impeachment alone. Um, but there's a whole uh, other issue uh, talking about how uh, – he badmouthed the president. But besides the point, the Democrats right now are still in the majority based off this rating. If you look to the side, you'll see the composition of solid, likely, lean. So 181 solid seats, 20 likely, and 18 uh, lean. And then you move over to the Republicans, 162 solid, uh, 19 likely, and 12 lean. So uh, the numbers aren't exactly the same. Obviously, the Republicans are in the minority. There are 23 seats. There are currently 235 Democrats in the House. Um, so if you take in uh, to a count a number of these toss-ups um, as of right now uh, just taking a look at it uh, the democrats are probably going to be around the same number if they are to win all these toss-ups i don't know why it's doing that let me see if i can fix that um, i'm assuming it would just be centering the map uh center map and then i'll just lock it so that way that doesn't happen again i'm just trying to zoom in on my own yeah that's so much better um but just taking a look okay so let's take a look at uh where <sighs> where we're seeing toss up uh, districts. Now, uh, if you take a look, there are a number of things on here that are considered contested. That makes sense. But a lot of them are likely or lean, which means that they probably aren't flipping from that unless something happens personal to the candidate. President Trump is around the same point, uh, actually at a higher point in terms of his approval rating nationwide. Uh, so he's definitely going to want to be around these numbers or even better by the time the 2020 election hits. But also, if you take a look at his uh, historical data um, in the past couple of years, President Trump has pretty much peaked at where he is right now and pretty much plateaued, um, leveled off. Uh, so let's take a look at the first toss-up seat that's in georgia 6th district uh if you remember back in 2017 that was um an election i did not personally cover because my channel was not created uh, but it was one of the first elections right after trump's uh presidential election first time the democrats uh, were able to show the republicans well they didn't actually but uh we're trying to show the republican party that they could um take back uh, a certain house seat did not work but then ended up happening in 2018 uh so really um it really uh just 
was a really weird combination of factors. Um, but Georgia 6th, Democratic District, Georgia 7th, Republican District. So two districts in the state of Georgia um, being focused on right next to each other, might I add. Um, very, very interesting dynamic there. Um, we might see a Georgia 7 or Georgia 6 flip, depending on how the president uh, is doing on Election Day. I personally expect Georgia 6th to remain the same. Karen Handel, the former representative who won in the special election, is planning on running again. I believe she actually has already announced for the 2020 election in Georgia 6th District, Georgia 7th District, very, very close back in 2018, uh, ended up going to the GOP. So get another area of consideration for uh, the Democrats to take a look. But um, keep in mind, a Republican there, so they can't really go wrong with the impeachment, considering that no Republicans voted uh, for the impeachment. Uh, but going over to Illinois 3rd and 14th, again, another Republican uh, Democrat uh I guess, situation where we're taking a look at, um, you know, possibility of Lauren Underwood losing her seats. Again, a lot of this is dependent on how the president's doing, but keep in mind, keep this in the back of your head, this entire video, even if all the toss up seats go to the GOP, the Democrats are still in the majority by four seats. That's just based off the numbers from Quick Political Report. And I agree. I do believe that the Democratic Party will retain the majority, even if they are to lose a number of seats because of this impeachment vote, which I don't think will be too relevant uh, in 2020 uh, compared to a number of things that I think Trump is going to eventually bring up. But uh, taking a look at uh, these numbers, they really don't stand uh, too bad of a chance for the Democratic Party. The Senate, on the other hand, is a whole other discussion. Going over to Iowa, we have three districts, um, for heaven's sake, being tossed up, all three of which are Democratic seats. It makes sense, though, if you look back to 2016 in terms of the presidential election by congressional district, it makes sense why these are considered toss-ups. They weren't exactly safe for the Democrats in 2016, uh, sorry, 2018. But uh, they were uh, pretty good for some of them. So we should actually end up seeing all three of those Democrats reelected. Uh, the Ford District was actually contested back in 2018 um, just because it had to do with the incumbent Republican, not because it was a toss-up district. Otherwise, Iowa uh, would be a complete toss-up state, but they're definitely Republican parts. Um, we're just going to gloss over uh, Kansas, Kentucky. Um, and then, actually, no, it isn't on here. Steve King, yeah, uh, he's considered one of the uh, closer districts, but still likely regardless. Main second district, Jared Golden. Um, you know, he's a Democrat who flipped a, a district that went to President Trump by a very large amount back in 2008, uh, 2016. Uh, so we should see uh, President Trump possibly visiting there uh, and endorsing a Republican. Uh, Michigan, 8th uh, district, not much to see there. I believe that was one of the few contested districts back in 2018. Um, Colin Peterson definitely makes sense why uh, Minnesota's Seventh district would be close um that one uh, again still need to take a look at uh, andy kim over here in uh, new jersey's third district jeff andrew previously uh a democrat now expected to go remain in the republican area but we'll see um uh, New Mexico, New York, uh, three seats in New York, Oklahoma's fifth district. That one definitely makes sense. That was a huge weird flip that I never really expected. Um, but a lot of the Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Texas, a lot of Texas, Virginia, Utah, uh, but that's pretty much it. Those are all the toss-up seats. Um, we can just go ahead and see how many uh, Republican seats that we have and how many Democratic seats that we have as well. Uh, so I guess I'll just keep track uh, real quick um, in terms of uh, toss-up seats. Um, but yeah, taking a look. So there's three from Iowa, which I think is uh, pretty interesting. Um, as I said, going over to Maine and then uh, Michigan, uh, Minnesota as well. Seems like a lot of these are uh, Democratic districts, but that also makes sense because they did win a number of Trump districts, 31 uh, Trump districts to be exact. So it would make sense for them to be uh, considered toss ups yet again. Um, I could be off a little bit by the count here, but um, generally you'll get the same numbers. And it is actually uh, pretty interesting taking a look at the random, um, not random. Uh, but some of these states definitely are a little bit unexpected as to why they have Republicans up um, as uh, toss-up seats. But that leaves a total of, let's see here, 18 Democratic toss-up seats and five Republican ones, which adds up to 23. So I think those numbers are correct. Um, but again, even though the Democrats lose all 18, they go over to the GOP. It's not going to do much for the GOP in terms of the majority minority. Um, thing. They're going to have to focus on a lot of these lean areas. But again, 
I'm not seeing much improvement for uh, the Republicans there. Yes, this impeachment may have hurt some Democrats in terms of how they voted, especially um, if they're looking at other uh, Trump districts. But keep in mind, the Democrats only needed 215 to f uh, pass this impeachment. Um, this is not the Senate. This, there was no trial, um, which is why I'm really confused as to why a lot of people are saying that there should have been a trial. That's the Senate's job. Um, obviously, I'm not going to say I support or don't support the impeachment of the president. Um but uh, it is going to be negative for certain Democrats and positive for others uh, and either negative or positive for the president, depending on which part of the country you're looking at. And when we're talking about regional differences, you know, the same people that might be celebrating in New York definitely aren't celebrating in Kansas. Uh, so it really all depends on the specific representative um, and how they voted. And to be completely honest, President Trump was going to be impeached regardless of how all these Trump Democrats decided to play it um, uh just based off of the early reports of the numbers, people who were dead set on it. Yes, there were a number of people that were iffy about it, um, but regardless, um, it's not too much uh, of a worry for some of these Democrats. Even if they have come from Trump districts, they know that they're in good company in terms of uh, their margins of victories back in 2018 or what they're expected to be in 2020 or some people just want to vote how they want to vote and don't really care about the re-election consequences uh, because at the end of the day, these one to two races uh, aren't going to impact the majority that much unless it comes down to a one to two seat majority. And like I said, the Democrats aren't losing much. The odds are completely in their favor for the majority. And if there's not much that can take them down, even an impeachment, then there's not really much to say uh, in terms of the Democrats possibly losing the House of Representatives in 2020. Thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.